Hi, I'm Cap Mike. In this video, uh, I'm going to experiment a little bit on increasing the capacity of this uh, microwave kiln. Now, it has worked uh, really well for what I initially purchased it for, which was to make glass blanks to make uh, projectile points, glass projectile points out of. And then I started making uh, pendants and jewelry, and it worked really good, you know. Uh, doing two pieces of glass together or uh, using dichro. It works It works really good. A little experimentation, but there are a few videos to show you how to do that other than mine. The next thing I done after I started uh, doing glass is I started working with uh, ceramics to see what, how far I could push ceramics in this kiln. And you can bisque uh, uh, clay in this kiln. It goes to roughly 2,000 degrees just depends on your microwave and your experimentation. But it will bisque a piece of clay. And then I took it further and I glazed the clay. And uh, it worked out really good. This is about as big a piece as you could put in it right now. And uh, did some horsehair uh, raku. It worked fine. And a little standard western raku. And that was great. That was great. I had no problem. But the biggest complaint if you want to call it a complaint, is you can't put a very big piece in here. But what I'm fixing to do is not going to allow you to do a big piece in here, but it will allow you to put a bigger piece in here, I hope. We'll see. So what I'm going to do is attempt to put something in there that's a little taller. Uh, if you try to put in something in here now, say such as this, as you can see, it just won't go down on there, okay? It's too tall. So this is the next step on a bigger, more functional microwave kiln. I'm going to build a nicer one, a bigger one. I have the supplies. I just have not got around to doing it, but I will. In the meantime, we're going to build this one and make it taller. These are my two oldest microwave kilns and I've been using them for a couple of years now and they still both function uh, exactly like they're supposed to. This one right here uh, it was an experiment where I was trying to measure the temperature on the inside somewhat successfully uh, but it's my very first one and, and it has gone through several uh, repairs and it's not doing too good, uh, but we're not going to be using this part. Uh, we're going to use the top part of this one because it's the one that is beat up the most. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to, and, and again, let me let me say here before we start. This is this is something that if you don't, you're going to have to have two kilns, and you may not want to buy two kilns. That's a sixty dollar investment for two. Uh, Thirty if you already have one and uh, you're going to have to destroy part of one of them. Now, uh, this is my experiment and it may not work, so don't go do this step by step. Wait till I get through, let's see if it works, and then you can make the decision on whether you want to go this route or not. But what we're going to do is this. This is going to be the, uh, the top of my kiln, this one right here. I'm going to cut out the middle of this one, put this one on it, just like that, and set it on top of that one. That is going to double my space and give me approximately five inches in here. The normal width inside one of these microwave kilns is about one and three quarters of an inch, so I misspoke. Uh, you've got basically three and a half inches to work with. That means that your bisque piece or your greenware piece or whatever you're going to put in there, uh, maybe even slump some glass over a small mold, I don't know. But it's gonna to have to be less than three and a half inches, okay, in in this way. So anyway, that's what we're heading for. That's the, 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 the what we're going to do. We're not going to use this, we're going to put it aside. And we're going to take this one and we're not gonna put it aside because it's going to be our top cap. And we're going to take this one that has the hole in it, and we're going to go ahead and cut out 
the top. Now mind you, you could use this one for the bottom. I'm, the hole will stay in here and you can stick a thermometer in. It just depends on whether you want the thermometer to be here or on the top. It may suit you to be on the top. Uh, in fact, let's see here. If we can... We're going to make a little change here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the middle out of this one because it has a bad spot in the top and it just all I'll have exposed is the sides and I'll take this one that already has the hole in it for the temperature probe and I'll put it right there and hopefully that that will seal it well enough that it will get plenty hot in there that's the idea so let's see how it works the tools that I'm going to use are going to be uh, an exacto knife, maybe a serrated knife that might punch through that a little easier, possibly some sandpaper. Uh, so let's get on with it. This one will go to the side. And I'm going to turn this one over and I'm going to try to work it from the inside. Now as you can see on the inside there is a little bit of, of the graphite material right you can see we can get it where you can see it. There's a little bit of the graphite material right there that kind of overlaps to the top. I'm going to try to cut through that. May have to come to the outside to do it, but it doesn't really make any difference. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go and we're going to start. This stuff is real soft. We're going to just start with this X-Acto knife and go around it. See if it'll, it'll speed things up a little. Now be very careful while you're pushing on this thing down and around because it is soft, soft material. So treat it like you would an egg. Now we can kind of see where we were on the top, kind of. So we're going to see if we can't kind of find that. Maybe not. Maybe it'll be better if I do it this way. Let's try it this way, folks. Now, as I said, you're watching me as I do this for the first time. So if it falls all apart or something messes up, then you're watching it as it happens. Now this is why I'm going to use a serrated, little serrated, ch uh, cheap steak knife. Because you can turn it up on edge, blade goes all the way through as you can see, and you can just cut with it like that. Again, be very careful. I can tell by the feel that when this piece comes out right here, it's going to be very, very uh, unstable and won't bust and crack. So. we gone all the way through yet? Not quite. But it already felt like it wanted to come out. Okay, so there we go. And let's see if it will come on out. It may come out from the back side better. There it did. Now, there you go. Do not throw this away. This material here can be, you cut the, the burnt glass out. This material can be kind of ground up and used with uh, other material to make repairs on your mold and other things. Put it aside. So here's what you have. It doesn't look real neat and clean, but you can take your knife and try to clean it up some. Uh, it depends on what you want to do. For the, uh, the sake of this arg uh, argument, <laughs> yes, this is an argument. For the sake of this video, we're not going to really clean it up so that it's perfectly uh, uh, smooth and nice because we're just going to try to test it. We still leave that little ring in there, you can see, and uh, that'll be perfectly fine for what we're going to do. So we're going to clean this mess up, and uh, we're going to test this thing. All right, we're ready for 
our first tests. I'm going to run two tests on this. I'm going to run a test with a piece of ceramic being glazed and I'm going to run a piece of glass in it and I'm going to drape it. So the first thing let's do is let's drape the piece of glass uh, and just see how that works in here. Now we're going to use this cup and it had been treated with ZYP and uh, we'll also use a piece of, of uh, shelf paper and I have a piece of 96 COE glass and we'll put it on the top like that uh, and this is pretty close to being where you could use a regular uh, kiln in it. In fact it's only two inches or not quite two inches but it's getting close but we're just going to see uh, if this double decker thing is going to heat up. That's the whole point. Will it heat up? If we take this one and we place it like this and then we take this one and we place it over the top and put it in our microwave kiln and this whole contraption should fit in the microwave kiln so let's go put it in it and fire it and see what happens okay this is the first experiment is completed uh, I zapped this in my microwave for two three minute intervals two six minute intervals in a 12 minute interval. What does that make it? Uh, 24, 25, 26, 27, about 30 minutes total. The thing I noticed is it's this as a unit heated up slower. By that I mean and until you notice that the entire unit on the inside was becoming red hot. I also noticed that it was hotter down here. Normally I can pick it up after it comes out even with 18, 20 minutes and it's not too hot to pick up but it was this way. That might be an issue to inside of your microwave being plastic. Just just bear that in mind. Uh, I did check the uh, temperature on this by sticking the probe in here uh, for uh, as long as it took to uh, kind of level out and it come to approximately 1500 degrees. Now it, that might be a little on the low side, it may have gone a little higher because it took so long for it to uh, reach its temperature on the on the uh, thermometer. So I'm sure the whole unit was cooling. So let's look and see what we've got, okay? Alrighty, we'll take this down and we'll take this piece off and what we have is this. Now, question is, it did, it did slump, folks. It slumped, which is what I was just trying to see, what the temperatures were going to be. I'm not trying to do any kind of craft. I'm not trying to do a successful slump, uh, fuse, a glaze, or anything. I'm just trying to see what the temps are going to be in this unit. And by that, we can determine what we can and we cannot do. This might still be a little hot. What I used was a, ow, wow, wow, hot, hot, hot. Uh, yes, it's hot. I used a ceramic cup, a little teacup that I have, or a sake cup, whatever, and it's ceramic. So, hang on, let me go get some gloves. Okay, we have some gloves. I don't know how hot this is, but it's not too hot to handle. Uh, will it come off? <clears throat> well, not, not readily. I don't know why. It could be because it's too hot. No annealing, no nothing here, just a slump on top of some ZYP glass treating. Well, it don't look like it's coming off, okay? We'll let this cool a little bit and try it again at the end of the uh, experiment. But that's what we have. It did slump it over there. And uh, for all practical purposes, it did work. It got up to the proper temperature. So what we're going to do now is we are going to fire some ceramics and I have uh, two that I'm going to try to fire. We are going to try to glaze this piece and this little bluebird. Now this piece right here, and the reason I'm doing two, is there are two different makes of glaze. And if you fool with this much, you know that all glazes don't fire the same. Some actually fire in the microwave kiln better 
than others. And this is some am, uh, Amico uh, opalescent whatever. It's kind of a green. And we're going to fire it. And then we're going to fire this crystal glaze by Duncan. Okay? And uh, I know Duncan does pretty good in the microwave kiln. So we're going to put another piece of uh, shelf paper on this and we'll fire this one first okay and if you're going to do this you 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 need to at least leave yourself a little bit of uh I'm not doing it but you know put you some wax resist or something or, or set it on a one of these this may be a little too high if you do it that way remember that uh tell you what we're going to do we're going to set it on a little piece of ceramic. How's that? Because I don't know how runny this is. Usually cone uh, 05 and 06 glazes are not runny normally. So we're going to put that there. We're going to take this and we're going to set it uh, right here. Let's turn it this way. And then we'll turn this one right here. And I noticed something here as I put this together that I'll talk about uh, whenever we complete these tests when I wind this up, okay? All the tests are completed uh, on this experiment. The first piece of ceramics that I uh, fired in this little uh, improved or modified kiln was this piece of bisque here uh, and I fired it with some uh, 056, 05 to 06 uh, Amico glaze and I have found that the Amico glazes as a rule need uh, at least the low fire glazes need more than the two coats, three coats, excuse me, three coats that I put on them to cover correctly. I don't know why. Maybe I'm brushing them on not liberally enough. Or maybe I should try pouring them. I'm not knocking Amico glazes. I'm just saying that they don't cover in in three uh, coats as I normally brush them. But for the sake of this experiment, uh, this particular firing went to about 1500 degrees Fahrenheit it does have a shine to it. It's uh, uh, it successfully glazed this. Uh, just I'm not really particularly fond of the color or, or, or how that came out, but that was the first one. The second one that I fired was my little bluebird, and uh, it was a Duncan 06 glaze, uh, a crystal glaze, and it also did not. Uh, quite reach maturity. That could have been one of the problems with this too. The maturity could have been higher. I think it's, oh, what, it's around 17, 1740 uh, to mature on 06 glazes. I have to look. Uh, but uh, this one uh, did really good. It's good shine, good color, but it's bumpy. You can feel that the little glass crystal glaze <clears throat> particles did not flatten out. It could have used a couple of hundred more degrees, maybe a little bit more hold time, but you see that's the problem with a microwave kiln. We have a hard time controlling that. Uh, but overall that's totally acceptable. Uh, it worked out great. Uh, so yeah, that, that will work. Now, um, the piece of glass after I let it cool a little bit, did pop off. So we have this nice little uh, <laughs> tiny cup that was made from the sake cup. I just, it's ceramic and I just put a little ZYP on it. You can use uh, several other products that work great. The ZYP just goes on really quick when I'm in a hurry. Uh, and uh, boom, it did a, a nice little slump. Sorry about that. I just lost power and it blinked back on and I had to start the uh, video over. So as you can see, the inside has that white portion where I cut out 
the uh, top of the microwave kiln. And that is going to be roughly one and one half inch. So what you get is the white ring in the middle because I put the black down the word has the graphite part in it. I put that down on the base here and uh, then I put the top on it which has a black ring in it and that left a gap where there was no uh, uh, graphite. So that I'm sure has affected the heating of this microwave kiln. You want it to be even. Uh, I know I have got these microwave kilns up to pretty close to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so what I'm going to do in another video, it'll be about improving this improvement. And I will clean this up and I have some graphite that I will try to mend this white with. So that's the first thing that I've noticed with this. So if any of you guys try this, uh, know that and kind of take it into account. Uh, and uh, pretty much that's really all I can tell you about this video. Uh, I'm pleased with it. Uh, we can uh, we can call this a success and uh, if I want to put a bigger piece up to what did I say? I told you guys about uh, about four and a half inches. Whoops, about four and a half inches, four inches uh, you know by the width which is about four and a half. So you can go about four and a half by four and a half if you have a piece of bisquare or you have a piece of glass that you want to slump or do something with. And you can do that in a microwave. And we'll do all of that in another video. Uh, I'll make some molds and make some special pieces and I'll try to improve this. And when I get it all done, I'll do an improvement on the improvement video. But right now, this is just can we make a, 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 an improvement to the microwave kiln and will it work? And the answer is yes. So that's my little blurb, bluebird of happiness. And uh, I'm through with this video. I'm Captain Mike and I'm out of here.